Right, okay. What, Chad, was your bad point? Oh, uh, my bad point was in-arena viewer experience. Right, um, what do you mean by that, then? Because that's a... that's a, It's very broad. It's a bit vague. Yeah, what do you mean by that? As it's in, listen, do you mean literally if I was a fan and I'd bought a ticket to, for example, kind of eat, say, or the major and stock up, do you mean literally just me if I went and I was just in the crowd randomly? Uh, yeah, I, and I, I think we can do it better. Um, the, the, the reason I think it's bad is because right now I feel like we are presenting professional Counter-Strike like it's a concert and not like it's a competition. Um, right. Let me use Katowice as an example. Due to the, um, I don't even know what word I'm looking for here, but the fact that the arena, it has this, it's like a, almost like a skylight in the middle, right? So the way that the arena's laid out, there's no ability to, to run a screen if with the setup they do, uh, smack bang in the middle. So for those right. people who haven't been to Katowice or haven't seen it in the arena, the way that they do it is there's two screens on either side. So in the middle is the players, and then there's some screens that give information on the HUD and that kind of stuff, but um, nothing to watch the actual game. So to watch the actual game, you look away from center stage, you look to either side, and then to go look at the players' reactions, you look back into center stage. So, my, so my it's a bit here, awkward looking back and forwards and up and I see what you mean, right? Yeah, so so in terms of the best way to ingest Counter-Strike live, I think we're doing it wrong. I don't think we've done it correctly up yes. until this point. I think there's been a couple of attempts that have been pretty nice. You go right to that dream hack event where we had where it was a bit like it was like the square and everybody was sitting around on the bleachers, right? That one was Oh, the Vegas a, one you mean. Uh, I think it was what, one of the DreamHack maybe Because I remember DreamHack um, Masters Las Vegas was a square like that where because that, if you remember famously because the crowd didn't come it actually ended up being the fact that because yeah. you couldn't you couldn't get an angle that didn't have like an empty area but no that was where it was right in the centre with four screens you know like in like a concert type hall yeah, and and the, this this is quite a broad thing here, but I can I can picture a lot. So, for example, Blast do a really good job of in arena entertainment, right? I think ESL are uh, attempting to catch up and offer more things in the arena to keep people and bums in seats in between games and breaks and everything like that. So that the experience you have in the arena is different from the one that the viewer has at home, yes. right? Uh, Blast do a great job of this. It's something that they put a lot lot of effort into being able to do. But I think that's another facet of it that we could definitely do better. But in terms of the viewing experience as well, right? I I think that this is something that we we should take advantage of um, we should take advantage of the fact that we have this video game that we can display all this different information and we can create something that that could be much more engaging for the viewer while they're live. Now, this isn't something I, I, we definitely need our prestigious events in massive arenas, our Katowice's, the Colognes, the Majors. But for me, I, I draw a distinction between a competition and and a, and a concert. And a lot of this is directed. The players aren't looking at each other, or maybe they are, but it's only slight looking at each other. And then it's all directed to a crowd, right? Like a competition, when you think of a competition, is something that people want to be watching and you, it, like actually immersed in as it's going on. We don't do anything to offer that. If anything, we're, we're, we're keeping them back and looking at screens. And that, that experience you could have at home watching. On do you actually right? want something then akin to like the lands where the idea is it more like, the, a bit like what Blast was trying to do with those frosted glass. Like the idea was there'd be sort of sections where they almost encouraged like, you know, trash talking the guy, looking him in his eye if you want to clutch it. Do you want something like that? Yeah, so so I, I tried to come up with something a while ago and I had like a render made, but it didn't turn out exactly as I wanted it. And and as we've spoken about these, where it's more of a central stage and it, it's a 360 or it's a square, whatever. But it's something where we, we take advantage of what we have available to us. I would love, right? I would love if we were able to, you probably guys have seen this at the Dota or the League of Legends stuff where they put like the mini map on the grounds below the, the booths of where the players are, right? Of, of the action that's going on, right? Imagine that in Counter-Strike with a radar on the ground on a big LED screen oh, sure, as these yeah. two teams are facing each other, right? So it's, we work out it's not visible, but the people in the bleachers are looking down. So now you can see the players, now you can see the ground, you can see the radar, and in front of us, as normal, over the players' heads are screens, right? We can actually offer up a better in-arena experience because there's, there's so many things, in my opinion, that detract from it, and I think we're in a great position right now. We don't necessarily... Like, I don't know what your boys take in on uh, is this, but uh, look, it's great to say that we had 9, 10, 11, 12,000 people in an arena. That's great if you want the BBC to pick it up and fucking run a news piece on Monday morning. But Counter-Strike, in my mind, it's not a fucking spectacle anymore. This isn't a, trying to, you know, validate ourselves in the esports world anymore. Like, we, we're... People know what we are and we have a fan base and we have people who want to buy tickets, you know? I don't want us to have an, a scenario where there are empty seats. I want us to maybe sell four to 5,000 tickets and fucking Timmy who didn't wake up early enough to order his ticket is feeling upset and he's going to have to wait until next year. I think there's every single element of these in arena experiences we can critique and make better because Duncan, you know better than anybody, mate. When you used to go to the early WCGs, SWCs, the Code Fives, all this shit, the best way to ingest Counter-Strike back then and the thing that gave you the most feeling and was the sickest thing was standing behind these players Absolutely. seeing them move their arm yep. seeing all of that and right now we, we 
we get maybe a webcam, right? We yes. get a camera of them. We get maybe a wide shot reaction. There's no reason that these players can't be in a Coliseum type environment where we surround them. The pressure's there. It's a competition. They can see their opponent and we actually get to feel like we're part of it. I'm fucking behind Jake Hess as he's standing up or Carrigan as he's standing up and I get to witness him doing that, right? I feel like we can get the fans to be more engaged in this, right? It's not just a sit and clap at a screen. It's, it's something where we all feel like we're part of it. I want a massive reaction to happen and then the camera shot goes to Carrigan and then behind Carrigan the crowd's going fucking wild everybody's on their feet they can't fucking believe the Rops clutch I don't want to have a shot of Rops losing his mind then a pan shot of the arena then fucking back to the clip like let's have an experience let's turn this into something people can actually enjoy end rant how'd the bad I, land I, was it a good bad I said yeah that's a that's a good bad I, I suppose the editing could be a little bit more dynamic uh, if they had live camera operators that were right there on the stage with them I I don't know if there's anything like COVID related why they couldn't do that they probably should be able to do that but uh I'll say I, I couldn't really you, you might need to talk to someone chat at HLTV I just went through all three of their playoff day pictures and I couldn't get one wide shot photo to see exactly okay. what the stage setup was like um so I couldn't I can't really remark on that um, I, I, I will say, I think the, the radar idea is really good though. I think that if you have like, I want to see a radar when I'm watching the game and I don't want to have to squint to the top left of a of screen or anything like that. So if there were a second huge display to show that, that would be ideal for me as a viewer. I, I, I also think that you said that there's no, uh, like display in between the players. I, I mean, again, I couldn't really see this from the photos on HLTV right now, but I, I also like, if that's not there, I, I don't know where this, why would the screens be anywhere else? Like, yeah, honestly. let me, let me send you, let me send you a link. I put it in the little chat room right now. That's just one right there. And I look, maybe we can, uh, I can talk you through this, right? So the two screens, the left and the right, the far left and the far right screen is where their game was. In the okay. middle, right? In yeah. the middle, that opened up. That's where the players walked out. And then the other screens, so the ones uh, left of the phase logo and right of the phase logo, they would show like the HUD. There would be tall pictures sure, of the player sure. with kill, death, all that kind of stuff. And then the far, the ones next to those, the little skinny ones, they had sponsor stuff. Nothing okay. game related, right? <clears throat> in terms of actual in-game Counter-Strike was in the center, which is exactly where the players were. Okay, that's that's a huge flaw. Yeah, I, I saw that photo. I didn't know what went where, but yeah, thanks for explaining it. I okay, that's a, that's a huge that's a huge error. That's a big misstep. Like you don't want the you don't want the players or the fans. I mean to to look away from the stage to watch the game itself. That just makes no sense. Yeah, flat out. Yeah, especially because as he was basically pointing out there, it's almost like. Like in this scenario as well, you're not going to be consciously doing it. You know, you can't be watching and going, right, I'm watching the POV. Oh, wait, what about the radar? I'll just look at, oh, wait, what about the hell? Like you want it to essentially be like, as all that tip, you just passively take it in. It just, it sort of intuitively makes sense. So I'm totally up for the idea, by the way, that like essentially, because it's, this is the problem with esports. Like, as much as everyone in esports goes, why are we saying it's like sports? It's like, you're the ones who do that. It's all you fuckers that come in later that just make everything one-to-one -one with sports. Because what you do is you take whatever you understand and that becomes your prism to understand CS, for example. So unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who just effectively just try... They they're Essentially, they're looking at sports setups, concert setups, and they're just iterating concepts from those. But the problem here is... Esports in general, but Counter Strike specifically, is a very different and unique game and viewing experience compared to any of those things we're talking about. And essentially, you sort of need to invent and innovate new ways to show it. Like, one thing I'll say that I'm very different about compared to most people, Chad, is you know, people always complain, like, our motherfucker, the second a TO brings a new HUD out. Well, I've learned because the first time you watch it, your brain's still getting a climb. It's like, oh, fuck, wait, am I supposed to look there for the grenade? Where, where is the score? Right? The first, like, time you watch it, half three reason you hate it isn't even that it's bad it's just it's hard work you're used to your eye automatic like the joke is like on a normal demo for example a pleb if they were starting to watch it if they just looked at like chad when he watches a demo his eyes are automatically flick into the corner and see the radar but he just his brain just does that for him he knows where or where on the screen the thing is and essentially he's doing it way quicker than if he consciously looked up the problem we have with a lot of the hud setups is we're, we've watched so many years of the most bare bones simple huds with just all the info on the screen that i actually think uh, 
I know this might sound outrageous to most fans probably disagree with me. I would be totally open, by the way, to TOs getting really creative. Like maybe you can come up with some insane hood where around the crosshair or something there's there's information that you can show me or so like I say, I can't know what's intuitive because we haven't tried half of this shit. All we've done is just keep doing a similar setup with essentially what we all all we've tried to do for the first six or seven years is just get all the relevant info on screen and make it look clean. That's it. We haven't really thought about these things we're talking about. How do you engage the viewer? How do you get it so that a casual viewer understands to look at the radar? How do you incorporate that within what it, you know, there's a, I agree with you. There's so, we've only cracked, we've only literally scratched the tip of the surface of this topic, in my opinion. And if you ever nail it, by the way, yeah, absolutely. The viewership just scales like a motherfucker. If you ever nail that stuff, if you ever make that simple and intuitive and anyone can watch the game and just be, just kind of know what's going on. And crucially, like you're saying here, there's an area where CS has an edge over every other game in the world. There's two factors. One, every CS pro, not as much now, obviously, but in the past, had insane amounts of LAN experience. So I always used to say, mate, our players, when they when they react to the camera, they body the other fucking games. Maybe in League of Legends, some guy's clever enough to know to do, like, you know, a funny gesture. Carrigan will do it every time he sees that light go off. Like, they, the pros who've been on stage long enough, the apexes of the world... They're like they're literally ready. They're just it's easy for them to slip in that entertainment ward. Then you add in, because we've got like a round-based system where you're getting a positive or a negative result each like interval, it's perfect for showing player cams. Which is why, again, notice how where we ended up. We end up in scenarios where, well, I want to see the player cams. Well, no one can know how he's gonna react, so just show all player cams on screen once, but they're a tiny little box. Again, you can see there's a flaw with that. There's something there's something about that could be done a lot better. Because I want I do want us to capture all the epic reactions of the players and these like that's the thing it is it effectively the reason this is important is this with sports right the reason you would always want to be there for a sport is for the atmosphere right like the atmosphere will be unforgettable at like a fucking champions league final or something the actual viewing experience for a sport will still be the best on your tv at home of course you can get all the replays the massive action you, you don't know how far away you are but that's the thing in counter-strike at the moment the arena's main, mainly, like I said in the early, the arena's mainly more just to give pressure to the players. It's not really that great a setup for fans. If you're not that close, you are just watching, like, essentially a screen miles away, aren't you? Like, just, it's like watching your phone, like, oh, like, in that scenario, you're not watching the best possible experience. So I agree. I don't necessarily know, again, like, we can have a whole sidebar as to what you can do or what you do. I'm actually open, like I say. I'll give carte blanche. If you're a TO and you've been really good, just start developing this stuff because I actually think we don't know best on this. Like I'll, I'll draw one last analogy to, to kind of give some goodwill to the TOs because I normally never give any ground to Valve. But one thing I will always give Valve maximum credit for is me and almost everyone else in the pro CS community was totally wrong about them changing the game sounds for the weapons. When they changed those weapons, we all said, like, the P250 sounds so stupid. What, what the fuck? Silence USB, you can't even hear it. But that's an op. That's not an op. It's supposed to be... If you go back now and watch a video from 2013, Chad, it's fuck, you'd think it was like Guantanamo Bay version of Counter Strike. Like, it's a nightmare when they're shooting orbs everywhere and fucking grenades are going off and everyone's firing an AK. You're like, holy fuck, how do I turn only that sound down? I can't hear the game sounds like. It's actually outrageous. The joke is, it's just because, again, in the initial sort of adaptation period, it just felt weird. But I, I give it up to them completely. Now I couldn't imagine the game with any other sounds. And if I go back, it is a million times better. So I'm open to the idea we reinvent this whole viewing experience. I think there's so much we could do with it. You can tell who's actually played CS before 2016 because they have irreparable hearing damage. Actually. <laughs> sure, yeah. Between that and then every fucker who sat that close to the monitor with all the digital vibrance up, it's like, we give it Guys, how have we managed to make video games like the fucking NFL where it's like, if you keep playing long enough, you're definitely going to be irreparably damaged just to win at the game. I feel like we've gone too far here. We've gone too far here. We've gone too far. And then again, at least nowadays, we don't just have Germans just running fucking straight configs on all the PCs. And you're just like, why, why does he take 10 minutes to unset his PC up? That's weird. <laughs> you know, he's like deleting all the drivers and everything. Like, why is, that's weird. No, normally they just leave him so I can change him. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then or, you know, be a pleb and don't.